This episode of Sports Spectrum's podcast is presented by Operation Christmas Child. It's a project of the Christian International Relief Organization Samaritan's Purse, and it's the largest, the world's largest Christmas project of its kind. The mission of Operation Christmas Child is to demonstrate God's love in a tangible way to children in need around the world and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Delivered into the hands of children through local churches, every shoebox gift with Operation Christmas Child is an opportunity to share about Jesus Christ and God's love. Since 1993, Operation Christmas Child has collected and delivered more than 188 million gift-filled shoeboxes to children in more than 170 countries and territories. And this year, hopes to collect enough shoebox gifts to reach another 10 million children. So will you join us? Will you join Operation Christmas Child this season by packing shoebox gifts or building a shoebox gift online? National Collection Week is coming up November 15th through the 22nd. That's where shoeboxes will be collected across the country at nearly 5,000 drop-off locations. We'd love to have you join us. Anyone can do it. Individuals, families, churches, students, groups. Packing a shoebox is a great way to teach kids about thankfulness and giving back to those in need. Check out SamaritansPurse.org slash OCC for Operation Christmas Child. SamaritansPurse.org dot org slash OCC to learn how to pack a shoebox or build one online. Operation Christmas Child. Welcome to Sports Spectrum, where we bring Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, former ESPN producer, Jason Romano. Welcome, everyone, to the show. I am Jason. This is the Sports Spectrum Podcast. We're so glad you joined us here on our show today. Check out our website, sportspectrum.com, for all of our content, devotionals, podcasts, articles, stories, all available for free at the website, sportspectrum.com. When you're there, by the way, sign up for our weekly newsletter. It is free. Every single Wednesday, you'll get an email from us updating you on all that's happening at Sports Spectrum, the articles, the stories that you may have missed. You can sign up, just put your email, and you're good to go, clicking that newsletter icon at the top at sportspectrum.com. And man, do we have one powerful story for you today. Brad Susi is our guest. He is Liberty Men's Basketball Associate Head Coach. He's there working with Richie McKay, the head coach, and building up a pretty powerhouse of a program at Liberty the last three seasons, they've gone to or won the conference championship and earned a berth into the NCAA tournament. Of course, 2020, COVID knocked out March Madness, so they didn't have a chance to participate in the big dance, but they had qualified right before COVID hit. In 2019, they won the NCAA tournament berth in their tournament. In 2021, they once again got to March Madness and got an NCAA tournament berth. So we talked to Brad about liberty and building success and building a program that's doing so well, working with Richie McKay and the impact Coach McKay has had on his life. They're entering their 27th season together as coaches in basketball. They were also at Virginia for a little while as well, and now back here at Liberty. But even more, we talked to Brad Soucy about his wife, Kendra, who passed away a year ago in August of 2020 at the age of 49 from breast cancer, and we talk about what that experience was like for Brad as a follower of Christ, as a dad, as a husband, and how he processed grief, how he trusted in God, no matter what the outcome was. There's a lot here, and if you're going through a situation in your life where maybe you lost someone close to you, or you're going through it, and you're trying to trust in God during a particular storm that's being, you know, thrown at you right now in your life, I really want you to pay attention to Brad Susie's words here. They are an amazing encouragement. I know they were for me, and I know they'll be for you as well. So let's take a listen to our conversation with Liberty Men's Basketball Associate Head Coach Brad Susie here on Sports Spectrum. Hi, Brad Susie. How are you, sir? 
Good. How's it going, Jason? Doing well. Doing well. Thanks for being uh, willing to come on and share your story here on Sports Spectrum. Um, let's start with, you know, and, and social media is wonderful in giving me this information, but let's start with this recent trip that you guys took to Puerto Rico. Um, I'm just yeah. scrolling through Twitter and seeing you giving updates on the iced coffee in Puerto yeah. Rico. And I'm thinking, <laughs> all right, we got to start with that and ask him about this recent yeah. trip to Puerto Rico. Tell us about that. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Um, we we're supposed to do a foreign trip with our team last summer, but of course, you know, everything changed with COVID and everything. So uh, we went ahead and did it this summer for a couple of reasons, namely because um, we had a young, you know, we got a really young team this year. Um, eight of our 13 scholarship players are underclassmen. Wow. four freshmen and four returning sophomores. So not a ton of experience. So, you know, it was a good time to just kind of get those extra practices this summer, you know, get our younger guys more app- acclimated to our system and then just get some game experience, you know, under their belt before, um, you know, we start playing in November. So it accomplished a lot of good things and it's always great to go to the beach. Um, so, you know, that was a, that was a nice piece. Um, yeah. And then I, I love coffee and I've really gotten into coffee a lot. So um, the video crew here, they said, hey, you know, let's let, they kind of had this idea of, you know, just doing some different, you know, coffee shops. And I love local coffee shops. So whenever I travel, I try to, you know, find local, you know, coffee shops and do different things. So it was it was a fun, fun experience. A lot of things kind of all wrapped up, uh, you know, into into that trip. When you go on a trip like that, what's the big takeaway? And it could be personal, it could be spiritual, it could be basketball, but what's the big takeaway for you when you come back from a trip like that? I mean, you know, the first is just really thankful for a lot of the blessings and things we have here, you know, in the States. I mean, you know, one example, we were in old San Juan, um, you know, trying to find some coffee shop slash dinner. And this was a Sunday night. And you know, we found out that there was no water in the whole downtown area. So some restaurants were using like bottled water, you know, no bathrooms and stuff were open. Most of the restaurants and places were closed. And that was like the main tourist area, Hmm. you know? So again, just really thankful for just a lot of the things that we take, you know, for granted, even, you know, just water, you know, all around us. Um, uh, And then just, you know, it was a good time of, being able to, you know, be with our guys and, you know, not have, uh, you know, it be in the middle of the season, you know, so we can kind of bring them along slowly with, you know, making mistakes and kind of just, you know, finding their way. Um, so it, it was just a good time of bonding, you know, when you're, when you're taking a trip like that, you know, you just spend time off the, off the court, you know, with, with guys. And in this case on the beach, you know, a little bit. Um, so, you yeah, know, a lot of good stuff, but most of the relational, you know, pieces is a lot of fun when you do those kind of things. Now, Liberty basketball, um, Brad has been on some kind of run these past three seasons, uh, three straight NCAA tourney berths. We know the 2020, mm-hmm. you know, tournament was canceled, um, because of COVID, but what do you think when you think back to the last three years has led to the success that y'all have been on, um, just watching mm-hmm. you on the court, knowing coach McKay and knowing, you know, the, the culture that's been built there. Uh, it's been pretty fun to watch. What do you think of uh, when you look back has led to that success? Yeah. You know, us being at Virginia for six years um, and really, you know, learning the process um, and, you know, staying with the process, you know, I, I think the biggest takeaway I got from working with coach Bennett was that he had a vision and a plan for the program and it took time, you know, and, but nothing changed, you know, he he wasn't giving in, you know, it it was hard. It was a hard way to play. You know, the defense is really, really hard. Players don't come in, you know, with that kind of defensive mentality, but it's just his will. He imposed his will onto the team. And then when you start having success, then, Uh, you know, that validates it. And so then everybody that comes in, you know, you just kind of fall in line and that's where it can just keep kind of turning over, you know? And so we had some rough early years at Virginia and then, you know, we had some rough early years here at Liberty, but it's the same thing of just sticking to the plan, sticking to the vision. And then, you know, when it kind of, 
when we got to where we had juniors and seniors and they had been in the system and they had the reps to be really good at it, then it started, you know, things started to turn. But in our first year, we lost our first 13 division one games. Wow. You know, <laughs> and yet, you know, you just, <laughs> you just stay with, you know, you stay with the process. So trust in the process, you know, even in those times where you don't really see a lot of the fruit is what really yields to the sustained success that I think, you know, Virginia has been experiencing. And then, you know, we're starting to kind of touch a little bit of that. And now you're getting ready for another season. Like you said, just coming back from Puerto Rico, you got a young team. Does it make Mm -hmm. it harder when you have the success? And maybe you kind of just answered this, but does it make it harder when you have that success in the success that you've had um, and raised expectations right now when you're looked at, Hey, they just went to three straight tourneys. So Mm -hmm. do it again. Um, Does it make it harder with those expectations to coach and prepare with coach McKay as you get this season going soon? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I look at it like I would much rather be on top than chasing the top. You know, I mean, for so much of, you know, our coaching career, it's like, you know, we were the ones pursuing, 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 you know, and now that we, you know, are kind of where we are, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's really fun, but you don't rest on that either. I mean, you know, we're always competing and trying to get better and find ways to do things a lot better, but it's really fun and enjoyable when you have the blueprint and you're just kind of, you know, making tweaks and, you know, small adjustments versus, you know, what are we going to do in this situation or how are we going to beat this team or whatever? So to me, it's a, it's a fun place to be and it's, it's equally as motivating but it's, but it's a different kind of motivation that I think, you know, can be, can be really fun. And it's a, it's a tribute to, you know, our guys and our, and our players, you know, that have just bought in and, you know, continue to, you know, put the team ahead of, you know, themselves on a, on a daily basis. You've been with coach McKay. I read this since 1995. Am I right on that? 95. Yeah, this is our going to be our 27th season coming that's up. That's incredible. So tell me about Coach yeah. McKay and his impact on your life and why that's the case. Because this is a business, mm-hmm. too, in some cases for a lot of guys who are trying to move up in the coaching ranks. And I've been to, you know, uh, the Final Four and I've been to mm-hmm. those convention halls and I see guys looking for jobs and looking for roles and talking. And I know how that world is. Mm-hmm. 27 seasons with the same guy. That's that's awesome. It really is yeah. pretty cool. Can you kind of explain a little bit um, the impact that Coach McKay has had and why you guys have been yeah. able to make it now for 27 years? Yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, I credit him for being in coaching because we met. I was in business um, and uh, had just moved to Seattle. He was an assistant coach at University of Washington and a mutual friend of ours kind of connected us. And so our wives, you know, became really good friends. We became really good friends. We would kind of play pickup, you know, and, and he's real competitive and I'm, I'm real competitive. So, you know, that's how we kind of became friends. And then a year later, he was like, Hey, I might get this job at Portland state. Would you want to come be my assistant? And I was like, no, you know, I'm good. I kind of got this business thing. I mean, I, I never desired to be in coaching, you know? And so, and then I was just, I kind of prayed about it, talked to some business mentors of mine. And one of the business mentors, he said, he said, you got a chance to go be a division one assistant. He's like, go do that. You can always come back to this. And so, you know, that was the best advice that I had received. And so we did it. And then, you know, we go to Portland state and they hadn't had men's basketball for 17 years. So our first year was just uh, Richie and I, and we had to go recruit. Um, I think we had 11 scholarships for that next year. We had to go recruit 11 people to like nothing. So, you know, we, I was thrown to the fire and, you know, I never, you know, I went my, to, to see my first recruit and I'm watching him and I'm, you know, I've got nothing to like go on. And I'm like, I think he's, I think he's pretty good. So I had Richie come see him. He's like, he's really, really good. So I was like, okay, all right, all right. At least I got a decent eye to evaluate talent, you know, cause you know, you have no idea, like, you know, what level certain players are, you know, when you're just getting into coaching. So sure. yeah, just a lot of crazy experiences and, you know, fun times, but, um, you know, he's been a, a, a great, great friend and, and, uh, you know, it's just been amazing how, you know, we've been able to, you know, do it together this long, but, um, you know, God is the one that kind of connected it and, 
brought it together and and uh you know i never i never thought i'd i'd be in this business you know at all let alone for for this length of time and just all the different places the great places we've been and then you know being on coach bennett's staff and i mean just a it's been an amazing time do you still have the fallback plan you know the business thing that you can go back to if this whole coaching <laughs> thing doesn't work out <laughs> yeah yeah no i yeah I, i've got an entrepreneurial side of me so yeah i I dabble in, you know, some things from time to time, you know, the head coaches are the ones that make the big money, you know, us assistants, we gotta, we gotta scramble and, you know, build our retirements in creative ways. (laughs) Hey guys, this episode of sports spectrums podcast is presented by our newest partner operation Christmas child, a project of the Christian international relief organization, Samaritan's purse, the world's largest Christmas project of its kind, Operation Christmas Child, is awesome. Since 1993, they've collected and delivered more than 188 million gift-filled shoe boxes to children in need in more than 170 countries and territories. And it's delivered in the hands of children through local churches. Every shoe box gift is an opportunity to share about Jesus and God's Love. So will you join us? Will you join Operation Christmas Child this season by packing shoebox gifts or building a shoebox gift online? National Collection Week is coming November 15th through the 22nd. Shoeboxes are going to be collected across the country at nearly 5,000 drop-off locations. We want you to come and join Operation Christmas Child. Visit SamaritansPurse.org slash OCC. SamaritansPurse.org slash OCC to learn how to pack a shoebox or build one online. Operation Christmas Child. Brad Susi is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. He's Liberty's uh, men's basketball associate head coach. He's been there now with Coach Richie McKay for their now 27th season. They're going to be starting this year coming up in 2021. Um, Your story, Brad, made some headlines um, the last few years in a very public battle that your wife Kendra had. Uh, with cancer. I'd like to talk about that and kind of walk through that a bit with you, if that's okay. Um, Kind of learn a little bit about the journey, Um, Mm -hmm. certainly God's place in all this and being present in the pain. I have to imagine there was a lot of pain, Mm -hmm. but can you kind of go back a little bit maybe and and tell us about Kendra and how you guys met and maybe the journey that you went on that took you to just a few years ago? Yeah, absolutely. So we met in college um, and uh, we got engaged less than a year after meeting and then, you know, got married. And, um, I, I was in business for about three years before into coaching and then, you know, got into coaching. It was just a wild ride. I mean, we were moving every two or three years and, you know, it was really challenging and tough. Um, but she was just a godly woman and, um, you know, just a great mother and a great, you know, wife and, um, just, a, you know, extremely supportive of this crazy, business that we're in, you know, just, it's, it's just so, so abnormal, you know, the schedules that we have and everything. I mean, as fun as it is, it's not, it's not a job, it's not work, you know, what we do, but it is very time consuming and, you know, different times and, and all that, you know, so she was, you know, incredible support, you know, for that, um, and did a, did a fabulous job of raising, you know, our, our three children and, and then, um, you know, three years ago, we get, um, you know, notice that she's got, you know, breast cancer, and it's a super aggressive type, triple negative. And, you know, so we just, you know, we, we start praying of like, you know, what do we do? What's the path? And, and, you know, there's, there's the traditional chemotherapy path and all that. And then there's a holistic path. And, you know, she just felt really strong that, you know, she was to go the holistic path, which, you know, you have no idea how to navigate that. And so it was just, it was a time where we just, you know, clung to each other and, and saw God and, you know, just went step by step. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it was a tough, tough road, you know, um, and early on, you know, there was, there was just, a, you know, we thought we we're kind of making some headway and then, um, a year, uh, about a year and six months into it, you know, we've learned that it metastasized, which, you know, means that it's, it's spreading throughout the body. And, um, but just amazing to, um, 
you know, how just friends and family and the body of Christ rallied around us, because that's a real expensive path and insurance doesn't cover, you know, any of that. And, you know, she, the, the first round, we felt God calling her to go to a place called Hope for Cancer. And they operate in uh, Cancun, Mexico, because a lot of the holistic, you know, uh, pathways are not approved, you know, here in the States. And so mm. um, we went there and, and, uh, you know, Richie and, and Julie and, you know, friends of ours were key. And, you know, re- you know, we started GoFundMe and raised a lot of money to cover, you know, everything for that. And, 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 and she had progress there. But then coming home, um, you know, and just kind of going through it, you know, that we were all, you know, me and my family and, you know, my kids, you know, we were all praying and believing, you know, that God was going to heal her and that she was going to have a testimony. And, and um, you know, so uh, when that didn't happen, you know, it's just like, you know, my kids and everybody's like, all right, you know, where do we go from here? And, and so I just began to like, you know, read stories about other, you know, godly people that believed and prayed, you know, for the same thing and it didn't happen. And, you know, it's just like, you know, in the end, we trust God, you know, because the devil likes to come in and, oh, you know, he's not real or, you know, you know, you believed and yet he still didn't, you know, just all those things that he tries to draw us away, you know, from God. And so um, it was just a time, you know, that my kids and I, we kind of just rallied together and, you know, stayed together and, and just really tried to support each other, you know, in prayer, you know, through, through that whole time. But, um, you know, it was really challenging, you know, just even going through our seasons and completing that and, and all that. But um, yeah, you know, it's really tough and you don't know why, you know, and I really don't even, you know, let myself go there. Like, you know, why, how, all that, you know, because it's like, all right, I got to trust you. I, I have no idea, you know, why or how or what it's going to look like, you know, going forward. But, you know, we trust you and we're going to seek you for for what's next. A couple follow ups off of what you just described. Um, getting the news initially because you're working for liberty and your faith is strong. And like you said, we prayed and we went through it. But for you personally, when you go through a situation like that, um, and you want to be the rock, right? You're the husband who wants to be there for your mm-hmm. wife and support in every way possible. Mm-hmm. But there's also this process that you got to go through yourself uh, with just yeah. you and God. Did you allow yourself mm-hmm. to have that? Or was it kind of all systems go? I'm just serving my wife here. And maybe it didn't yeah. come till later. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I fully agree with her with the path that she chose because, um, you know, when she first got diagnosed, um, she had triple negative, you know, breast cancer, which means most of women's breast cancer feeds off of one of the three estrogen receptors in a woman's body. So when they find out which one, they just shut that down. And then you've got, you know, a better chance of beating it. Well, hers, you know, they basically don't know how it survives and, you know, how it grows. Um, So they just want to, you know, hammer it with chemo and the type of chemo that they, you know, we're going to give her, you know, you've, you've got a 3% chance to live beyond five years, you know? And so we're just like, well, let's try the other thing. So I was full support of, you know, her doing that, you know, and, you know, and you get people questioning, you know, that path, but I don't have any, you know, doubts about, you know, that, or even, even regrets, um, you know, of, of what happened, um, you know, from that standpoint. Um, But, you know, as crazy as it may sound like even, even each, phase where physically, you know, you could just see the decline in her physically. It was like, I was believing that, you know, she was going to be healed. I mean, you know, we never, I mean, even to her last breath, we never talked about, you know, death, you know, we just, we were believing that, you know, she was, she was going to live and God was going to, you know, and each, each phase, you know, you're like, okay, the miracle is going to be greater. The miracles, you know, going to be greater. And it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a passive, you know, like, oh, I'm just, you know, trying to ease my kind of like, you know, I was like, I really believe, you know, I mean, I, I believe God still heals. I believe he still does, you know, the things that were done in the Bible. Um, And so we were just, you know, we were believing those things for her and, you know, even up to the very, very last, you know, last minute. And, I don't, you know, somebody asked me to say, you know, well, do, do you regret not, 
having some final, you know, words for her. And I said, no, I was like, you know, she would want me fighting in prayer, you know, for her healing, you know, right up until, right up until the very end. What did you learn from God through watching Kendra battle for those few years? What was God teaching you at that time? And what was he showing you as you mm-hmm. watched your wife go through that? Yeah. Good question. Um, you know, it's, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a real tough thing to go through, but again, it's like, I, there, like I would wrestle with God in my quiet times, you know, cause I, there was many times where like, I just heard God say that, you know, he was going to heal her and I would wrestle with him. I said, you know, God, look, if you're not going to do this, if you're not going to heal her, like, just stop speaking it. Like, you know, just like, you know, that's okay because I'm believing it. Yeah. And I'm even telling other people, you know, even to the point where my kids were believing it, even in the face of, you know, decline. And, you know, and so even that, you know, you, you know, you can go back and be like, well, was God really speaking to you or what, you know, what was that? You know, and it's just like, I, I, firmly felt that he was and believed him, you know, and there's been a, there's a couple pastors that, you know, I, I listen to and I follow and, you know, they've, they've prayed and seen people healed from cancer. And yet both of them had close loved ones that they were, you know, praying and believed that they were going to be healed and they weren't, you know, so it's for whatever reason, it's not, you know, it's not like a blueprint, like, Hey, do steps one through five. And then God's going to, God's going to heal. You know, he does heal. He doesn't seem to heal every single time, you know? And so, you know, to me, I guess it's a, it's just a, it's a quest of, um, you know, Jesus, every time he prayed for someone, you know, they were healed. And so it's like, you know, there's just a, even a greater desire to have greater intimacy, you know, for him to, for, you know, for that in the future. Um, and I just, you know, I've really been burdened a lot lately, you know, cancer is just a brutal, brutal disease. And I don't feel like God wants us to just accept it. You know, I mean, it's on the rise in our country and it's ravishing so many of his children, you know, and it's like, I, I just get a sense of rising up in prayer a lot, you know, for the defeat of, of this, uh, disease. Yeah. I heard, um, Tony Evans son, Jonathan Evans, um, preach at his mom's funeral. And Mm -hmm. Jonathan was on our podcast a couple months ago and, uh, he, he shared this again. And I don't know if he thought this during the process of his mom fighting, because he said it after, but he said either my mom, he, he felt like the Lord had shared with him in his heart, either my mom was going to be healed or she was going to be healed. And what he meant was healed mm-hmm. on this earth or she's going to be with Christ. Yeah. And she's going to be completely healed there with him. Right. I thought that was fascinating to hear. I'd never mm-hmm. heard that before. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if, if that's something that you kind of felt after your wife yeah. had passed, but is that something that kind of you sensed once yeah. you know, when she had gone on to be with the Lord? Yeah. Um, you know, people have said that, you know, to me and I, you know, and I said, you know, there was one time that I, that I remember really clearly, I was driving onto campus, uh, to work and there was a big, bold rainbow, you know, that I saw it just got done raining. And, you know, I just heard God say like, you know, what is the, what does a rainbow stand for? And it's like, well, yeah, you, you're never going to, you know, wipe out the face of the earth, you know, with, with a flood again. He's like, yeah, but it also means for you that, you know, cancer is not going to take Kendra's life. And so I was like, all right, you know, I was holding on to that, you know, but then it's like now, you know, we're here. And so, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, she's in a much better place, you know, for sure. Um, you know, I heard a pastor say, you know, you can't, um, how do you say, he said, you can't threaten me with heaven. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and it's a really good, you know, thing. Of being like, yeah. I mean, you, you know what, you know, I mean, whether it's, you know, terrorism or, you know, facing death, he's like, you know, you can't threaten me with heaven. Like, really? Like, that's, hey, that's incredible, you know, but I think a lot of times we, you know, we desire to hold on to this life, but, you know, that's just been a real, you know, bold thing that stood out, you know, and even with what you see on TV now, what Christians are 
going through in Afghanistan, you're just like, God, like how, why, what, you know, but that, that word, you know, you can't threaten me with heaven. It's like, you know, if they die because they're proclaiming Christ's name, I mean, you know, right. What a better way to go to heaven. Not that we're wishing that and not that we're not praying for things to change over there, but it's just, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great perspective. Yeah. That's why the Bible, I think says for us to be focused on eternal things and not temporal things like of what we have on this earth. I think that's a great reminder. Um, even in the midst of a storm, when you walk through Mm -hmm. it and you go through it, um, when she did pass, uh, last August, you know, hindsight is 2020, right. And you can look back now a year later and process it probably maybe a little bit different than you did initially. Um, Mm -hmm. but how do you think you were able to process that grief after she had passed? Because initially I think it's a wave, right. And you go into like planning mode and everybody's coming to visit or however you guys did that with a celebration of her life, but then life comes back and you move Mm -hmm. on and you have three kids still, and you're still coaching basketball. How were you able to kind of walk through that afterwards and still be able to process the grief that you were going through? Yeah. I mean, it was a lot of, um, you know, tough days and tough moments and, you know, sad moments of like, you know, I mean, we were getting close to being empty nesters, you know, so you begin to, you know, dream and talk about, of you know, what your future is going to be look like, you know, after the kids, you know, get out on their own and just all those things. And like now all of a sudden it's like, all right, everything is, you know, everything is totally different. Um, and so, and then the biggest thing was just, you know, for my kids. And so, um, Levi was staying on campus, you know, at the time and he moved off and came home. So all my kids were at home, which was really good. Like I know a couple of people, you know, that went through this and all their kids were already out of the house. So they were coming home to like an empty house. And that mm. would have been really, really hard. Yeah. Um, but my kids were there. And so we just developed a system of, you know, that if anybody was struggling, we had a little code, you know, word or text or whatever, you know, that we would send out so that, you know, we just know we could rally around each other, support each other. Um, and then, I mean, you know, jumping back into work, you know, was good. Just, you know, it gives you a, you know, a temporary distraction, you know, for moments in time. Um, but yeah, it was really just a, you know, it was just a complete change of what you thought life was going to be, you know, in the years, in the years ahead, in the years ahead. So, you know, it was just everything like open arms, like, all right, God, like, you know, my hands are open. Like, I mean, I'm willing to not coach if that's what you have, like whatever it is you have for me, you know, next, like, I'm just, you know, I'm wide open, you know, to that. Um, So it was, you know, it was a little bit of, you know, looking out, you know, for what was down the road for me, but more so just, you know, for my kids of just really trying to help them, protect them, guide them through, you know, because their faith was strong and now it was like rattled, like, you know, is God real? Is this, you know, and there was just, you know, all those, you know, moments and all those, you know, feelings. And so, um, but it was, it was really good that we could all be together and kind of just help each other through. How are the kids doing now? How are they doing? You know, they're doing better. I mean, it's, you know, it's still, I mean, they were really, really close, you know, with Kendra. And so, you know, as they come upon, you know, getting married or, you know, just, you know, graduation or, you know, those moments of like, you know, that are fun and exciting, but they're like, oh, you know, but, you know, mom's not going to be there. And and so, I mean, you know, there's just, there's continual challenges with that. And, you know, this is not fair. And, you know, just all the typical questions, but I'm, I'm proud of them. They've, you know, they're all back, you know, walking with God and, and, you know, seeking him and, and, you know, living life, you know, through their gifts and talents, you know, not in a perfect way, but, you know, they're, the devil's not going to, you know, take them away, you know, from God, even through a situation like this. My last one on this. Um, and I'm just curious, you know, that it's been a year when you think about it, how did your relationship with Christ evolve or change at all? Maybe it didn't change after Kendra passed. Did it, did it grow? Was it, was it different maybe previously? Um, what was that personal relationship that you have with Christ like? Yeah. 
Um, I mean, literally like, you know, Kendra and I's relationship was, you know, going through, you know, some, some challenges, you know, in the, in the years prior. And it was more, it was more so just because um, I, I heard a pastor say, he said, he said, most Christians know that God loves them, but few Christians have experienced God's love. Mm. And, 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 and he's like, there is a difference, you know? And so I, you know, I, I heard that and I just began to pray like, all right, God, like, you know, let me experience your love. Cause I knew, you know, uh, loving was, you know, I didn't, I, you know, I don't think I received great love growing up and it wasn't any fault of my parents, you know, it was just how they were raised and the generational stuff. And so, you know, I don't feel like, you know, I loved well. And so literally like, you know, months before her diagnosis, it was like, you know, God healed me. He, you know, you know, expressed his love on me, which then changed everything. I mean, and it was just, you know, it was amazing what God did in our relationship, you know, and so that was kind of the beginning of just this, you know, change in my walk with him of just, you know, being able to go deeper because now I've experienced his love, which then I can love others in a whole different way. Whereas before it was just like, okay, do this, do that, do that, you know, and it's, you're, you're trying to do loving things, but it's not coming from a place of love. And so that's been something that has really just changed my life, even, you know, through that experience, you know, with her, but then even now of just, you know, um, desiring God's love more, desiring to love him more, which then allows me to love others, you know, in a whole you know, another way. And so it's, you know, there's more hunger for him. There's more hunger and a desire to like carry forth whatever it is that he has for me, you know, for the remaining, you know, time that I have, you know, here, here on earth. Did you find yourself um, recognizing that you do have a testimony here to share versus you kind of, you kind of mentioned it, you know, with your wife, you, you and her were talking about, Hey, we're going to believe she's going to be healed and, and my wife's going to have a testimony. Um, and there still kind of is a testimony that came out of all this, isn't there? Yeah, there's been a couple of situations. And then my kids have had some moments, too, you know, where either somebody is kind of ahead of them in this process and they've been able to comfort and encourage my kids. And then my kids have come across some people where they're ahead of some of their friends that are now going through some of that stuff. So it's amazing how, you know, and, and God's brought people into my life that have helped me you know, walk through, you know, this time. So it's amazing how in this journey, you know, it's important, you know, to have people pouring into us and then we can pour out, you know, into other people, um, which is, you know, God's, God's plan, you know, for it all. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's been really good from, from that standpoint, you know, and you just know that the things that we go through are not just to, you know, for us or for us to keep it inside of us, but to share, to talk, to look for opportunities where we can, you know, be a blessing or an encouragement to others. Well, Brad Susi, thank you, my friend. Thanks for being willing to share your story. Mm -hmm. um, our condolences, obviously, I know it's been a year, but uh, our condolences certainly to you all. It sounds like God thank is you. still working in you and your family's life, uh, which is great. And you got another basketball season coming up to look forward right. to, which is exciting yes. as well. Um, thanks Absolutely. for being here. Thanks for being thanks. here on Sports Spectrum. Can I share one more thing? Absolutely. Just one last thing, you know, and, and this is just a, for a word of encouragement for everyone. One of the things I've learned through this is that, you know, after her passing, you know, I felt like like people were, in, were on one of two sides. There was a lot of people that because they didn't know what to say, they didn't say anything versus, you know, a friend of mine was, you know, talking to another friend and the, the other friend was like, well, I, I just don't know what to say. And he's, and he said the best word. he said, he said, it's not saying something perfect. It's just, just say something. He's like, just say something, you know? And, and there's a lot of people that, that just said something, you know, they just, it, they checked in or they asked a question or whatever, you know, and it's not judgment or condemnation on those that didn't, but it's just, you know, I think when, when we know people that are going through tough times, it, it was a blessing to me to have people that 
you know, checked in, you know, so mm. never think that you're bothering or that you're bringing up bad memories, you know, by just asking how you're doing or by just saying something, you know, it's really, really powerful. And I think, you know, the enemy can kind of use, well, you know, you don't want to like make them think about it or, you know, I don't really know what to say, you know, so, you know, that the enemy is about division. God is about unity, you know, and that's just, that's kind of a small thing that I experienced. I just, have been sharing that because I feel like it's powerful to just, you know, make that connection. You know, if you know somebody that is going through a hard time, you know, cause I feel like they will, they will really appreciate, you know, you just saying something. Well, that's really great encouragement, Brad. Um, thank you again for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. That was one powerful conversation with Brad Soucy from Liberty, uh, their men's basketball associate head coach. And uh, I'm just glad he was willing to share it. I really was. And it encouraged me. Um, I have not gone through a storm like Brad Soucy went through. But in talking to him, when that storm comes, because we all go through them, we're either coming out of a storm, we're in the midst of a storm, or we're going to go through a storm. When that happens for me, I'm going to take heed to what Brad Susie said. And I may even go back and listen to this podcast a few times because I thought his words of encouragement were really um, the type of words that I needed to hear, the type of words that hopefully you needed to hear, and words that will continue to be an encouragement for hopefully many people, including myself, as long as this podcast exists. So many thanks to Brad for being here on the show. We really do appreciate him, and it'll be fun to get ready for college basketball starting in a few weeks, almost maybe a month or so until the college basketball season really kicks off in full force. And it's going to be fun to see if Liberty can do it again and make it four straight trips to the NCAA tournament. Thanks to Brad for joining us here today on Sports Spectrum. Thank you as well for listening here on the show. Check out our website, sportspectrum.com, for all of our content. And make sure that you rate and review and subscribe to this podcast to help get the word out and then tell someone about sports spectrum. Tell someone about this podcast, use sports spectrum as a resource to share the gospel of Jesus with someone else. We believe that sports is a perfect way to introduce people to Jesus. And we believe that Jesus belongs in the sports conversation. And so use this podcast, use our articles on our website, our magazine, whatever it is, use that as a resource to be able to, to share the gospel with someone else. If you need to reach me directly, you can email me, jason at sportsspectrum.com, jason at sportsspectrum.com. I would love to hear from you. And join us next time right here on Sports Spectrum's podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.